Okay, yes, please sir. don't call me. Please, please don't call me, sir. Uh, I'm not. I'm not as old as Purva. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm much Thanks. older than her. <laughs> I'm much older than her. Uh, but don't call me, sir. Okay, so uh, we can start with. Okay, a quick question. Uh, how far far along are you guys in your course? Like, how much about uh, commercial photography or lighting or any of that? Do you guys know? So, in the field of photography, since uh, I started photography was in my school life and when I was in class seventh or eight. Okay. And now I am being like pursuing my same do, and it's about to over same first year. First year, okay. Anyone else? See, I think I can majorly see the same two students that is first year. So they have first just year, okay. uh, started with their lighting and stuff. They started with lighting. A very little, like basic. Mostly, it is natural lighting because they haven't uh, been able to come to the okay. studio. Okay, yeah. Yet. So that's 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 fine. Uh, I just wanted to have an understanding, so then I explain accordingly. Um, okay, so Beirut biryani um, was one of my first campaigns. I don't know if you guys would have seen these images. Yes. Um, if you are in Pune, Bomb, and most of the major cities, about two years back. um these images were all over major cities um i remember in bombay people sending me pictures of hoarding after hoarding after hoarding in uh, in bombay the same thing was happening in delhi um so these are uh, images that i did for behrus there were total of five images that we did um so this is one i don't remember the names of the biryanis now but uh, the, the this whole campaign actually started with they wanted this uh, this particular biryani this is their mutton biryani uh, i think it's called the dum ghost or something uh, this was their main hero biryani let's uh, that they wanted to launch and they were going to launch it newly in bombay and pune at the time so this campaign was actually limited to just these two cities it was just it was supposed to be just for bombay and pune but um right i'm not trying to blow my own horn here but then the, the entire team did such a amazing job that the client was so impressed that they decided to go pan india because the images did really well for them in bombay and pune um so this is another one uh just remember this crown when i show you the brief uh, you'll understand why but just remember this crown um this is their paneer i don't like paneer but we still had to shoot it this is their paneer biryani uh yeah so basically how how a food shoot like this happens especially for bigger campaigns where you're looking at a advertising campaign that clients want to do hoardings they want to do you know push it out there it basically starts with something called a brief right um it's something that the normally clients will hire an advertising agency or a marketing agency and the so here in this case the client uh, is behrus biryani they hired the agency called bbh that's their logo that sheep logo is bbh's logo so they hire the agency bbh and say okay we want to do a launch campaign for bombay and pune for our new biryani uh, come up with an idea for it so this is uh, basically bbh's idea for the biryani this is so they prepare the campaign right uh, and then once the client approves it then they send it to there are lots of people involved but let's just say it finally it comes to the photographer and the photographer's job now to give casting and say okay we can do this we can't do that that sort of stuff so the first campaign this one they actually got in touch with me i think in the beginning of 2018 uh the first idea that they had was to do this it's a uh, basically a top shot of a biryani and then i don't know if you guys can see but um, these are all ingredients yeah right there's a star anise there there's uh, the cardamom there's turmeric powder they wanted to create this whole uh, carpet effect of very royal carpet effect with just ingredients um this is another one like you can see onions here and it it's it's crazy it's it's a lot of work um 
like here you see this is the rice that they wanted to do your white rice and brown rice and all sorts of stuff you have pistas you have green uh, sorry red chilies you have coriander so when you when we do shoots like this especially major advertising campaigns i work with a someone called a food stylist uh, now a food stylist is basically the person who puts the food in front of the camera now food uh, i mean you would have noticed right if you guys i'm sure all of you have had mcdonalds uh, you look on the menu board the burger looks like something but when it comes to your app it looks nothing like that uh, it does not look for photography worthy when it's when, when it comes to you to eat i mean but that's going to be true right you can't have something that looks good and then eat it also at the same time so the food stylist is the one who makes it look like how it does on a menu board right so uh, in this case the food stylist when i spoke to the food stylist her name is esther you should follow her work also um, if i spoke to her and this was crazy i mean it, we were like this will easily take one day just to make this so if they want four images or if they want five images it's going to be a five day campaign and a five day campaign turns out to be very expensive it's not uh, cheap for the client so we told them that we went we told the agency that you know what great idea but doing something as crazy as this is going to take one day just to uh, create and then we'll have to shoot it and then you know maybe it works maybe it doesn't work because there's so much of fine tuning if you see the kind of detailing that's happening here it has to be perfect you can't i mean it has to look like an actual carpet but it's made from ingredients so you can't have lines it has everything has to look symmetrical and all of that so we spoke to the uh, agency we said okay you know what if you want five images it's going to take you five days and uh, we gave them costing for it and obviously they disappeared right uh, it was too high for them um, then that that happens okay be ready for this when you when you pass out of photography school you will uh, client will approach you or you will approach a client you will give costing they will not like your costing and they'll disappear in today's terms is they'll ghost you right they won't uh, they won't bother responding to your email or or any of that they just you won't know you're too expensive they don't like your work what is the reason you won't know but then we knew by then like it was too expensive obviously so what we didn't know at the time was these guys were going back to the drawing board and trying to come up with a different idea because a five day shoot for five images is insane uh, some campaigns allow it but this campaign didn't make sense to do that because it was just meant for two cities uh, it was not meant for pan india so then they came back to us and they said okay you know what we've changed this production brief 1904 uh, so 19th april is when they sent me this so this is when they came back to me and said okay we've changed the idea because we can't do five images in five days uh, we want to do five images in one day so then they um, came back to me and said uh, this is the layout they gave me this is the mock up they gave me uh, so you see this this crown i said remember the crown uh, this crown was very much part of their brief and they wanted this particular crown so all of this is uh, basically stock images put together to create a mock up right this biryani is from somewhere else this crown is from somewhere else these ingredients are from somewhere else you just put it all together in photoshop photoshop to show the photographer or the production that this is what we are looking for right um, this was the first one and then just when we were about to finalize i mean get to the shoot they sent me these uh, these are basically mock ups where they say uh you know this is what we are looking for you know we want a table which is going to look like a, a persian rug or something like that they want a plate of biryani and they want props around it again they were very particular about this crown uh so here again you can see that this is a mock up like it's not part of the same image but it gives you an idea right they want a hourglass they want this thing with dates coming out they want a lantern they want this coffee pouring thing uh lantern again dagger i mean notice all the props that they've mentioned here in their brief or oh, sorry in their mock up or they they show us here uh so they create this in photoshop 
and then they send it to me saying that this is what we have in mind right so we have a very fair idea going into the shoot what the client and what the agency is looking for so then finally once all of that is done we know exactly what they want we just have to execute so that was the mock up that you saw this is the actual actual shot and now when i say actual shot also this is a little complicated this involved quite a bit of photoshop um to give you an idea what this the retouching was done by i according to me one of the best in india uh, his name is chirag doshi unfortunately he passed away earlier this year uh, but chirag and prasad you should check them out um, they do amazing work uh, this retouching was done by them and to put things in context just to give you an idea of how much effort and time went into this chirag and prasad charged 50000 rupees per image to retouch so for five images that's 2 lakhs 50000 so if you know you think retouching is more lucrative maybe you go down that road i don't know but uh, yeah there was quite a bit like uh, insider secrets i can share with you this background that you see the um yeah sorry this background which makes it look like a palace that was added in photoshop um this is actually a carpet so you may i mean do you see all the props that we i mentioned they wanted a little container with like prunes these coffee pourers lanterns um the hourglass one of them had an hourglass so then we made sure we got an hourglass as well ingredients are down here your lantern lamp basically we tried to make it as close to the mock up as possible now it's i mean someone can ask why don't they just use the mock up why do we need to shoot it because the mock up does not look natural number 1 and number 2 it's not their actual biryani um this is the biryani that their actual product we've just it's a larger quantity in a bigger plate because the idea was it's supposed to be a uh, biryani for kings or something like that that's what that was their camping um again if you remember in the mock ups i showed you the dagger here we managed to get a dagger and all of these props now of course the advantage is uh, because we shot this campaign in bombay all of this becomes all these props become easily available thanks to bollywood um all of this uh, right from this dagger and you know it's it's all available now this uh, interesting story behind this crown if you notice this crown has been there from from the uh, right the second the minute they changed the brief and sent it to me this this crown has been there this crown is actually a stock image but uh, we've tried to find something similar or close to it and to the surprise of everyone including production and me the agency the client for some reason in bombay you can't get such a crown i don't know why i mean with especially with bollywood there you should get something but we just couldn't get a crown like this so um i don't have a picture of that but in the actual shot what we did was we put a toy crown one of those uh, crowns for kids parties yeah. um only because we needed to take the base of that so this base that you see down here mm -hmm. this is from that toy crown and then we added chirag added the stock image of the crown on top so that the perspective looks similar mm -hmm. but yeah i mean that was basically the the beru's campaign and uh, like i said this was uh, uh, plastered all over india in fact it uh, I, i was i don't remember uh, if my wife saw it first or if we saw it together but, i had sent uh, you a picture in from indore In yeah, Purva had sent yeah. me a picture from Indore. People had sent it to me from all over India. Uh, when I put it up on uh, Facebook, saying that you know what, hey guys, this is my work. Uh, yeah. I got messages from all. I didn't even know it went pan India. I got messages from all right. over India, saying that oh my god, we didn't know you shot it. Oh my god, this. Oh my god, that. I mean, but I think this has been one of my most successful campaigns because if a client decides to use it for India, I mean, sorry, Bombay, Pune, and then decide to go. pan india that means the images are doing really well for them to the extent i think once my wife was traveling in the metro in dubai i mean dubai actually at the moment my wife was traveling in the metro one day and then it stops at one of the stations 
the doors open and right in front of her is a holding of uh, this uh, barrel's image like she was shocked even she didn't know that the images were going to be launched in um uh, dubai as well but then yeah then even when i came down once uh, there's a mall here called dubai mall there the huge hoarding of uh, barrels so it was easily one of my my bigger better uh, campaigns yeah so so that's basically how a a campaign works like from start to finish like you get the brief you plan you execute like there's no there's no margin for error uh because i keep i mean it it may sound very foolish when i say this but then it's actually true i like in what we photographers do uh for advertising campaigns similar to what a surgeon does in the sense uh what i'm trying to say is a surgeon has only that one opportunity to cut into a person and save their life right uh, there's no margin for error that's very similar to a photography campaign a client is spending lakhs and lakhs of rupees right easily this beru's campaign would have gone up to like say 7 8 10 lakhs and that's just for the photo shoot we're not even counting the amount of money they'd be spending to put it up in holding and all of that or how much they're paying the agency but everything boils down to you as the photographer and your team so okay. you may you may look at it and go like oh okay you know but my photography fees is only 25000 or 50000 or 1 lakh or whatever but the entire let's say 50 crore campaign that they end up spending everything lies on you as the photographer and you only have that one day or the days that you say you'll take to deliver you only have that one day to execute it and i don't care what people say you cannot fix a lot in photoshop uh you can do a uh, photoshop is like magic yes you can do a lot but if you screw up on the day of the shoot there's not much you can do to to save yourself so it is i mean i liken it to a surgeon like you have that one opportunity so you have to go in to that shoot with the same uh, mindset that it's do or die and because there's so much money riding on it it is do it's as good as a surgeon cutting into a human being you're saying i have to save this person's life similarly i cannot screw up this photo shoot because again another problem with screwing up a photo shoot is the industry is very small uh you may think you know there's so many photographers out there there's so much work that i agree but compared to any other industry that like say engineering or doctor or lawyer or any of those fields it's a very very small industry so you screw up everybody knows <laughs> and i'll tell yeah. you why everybody knows when it comes to the next campaign uh but before that uh, i don't know or anyone if there any questions yeah i just uh, like i i'm sure the kids must be having some uh, you know questions but i just want uh, if you can like before we move on to the next uh, campaign mm-hmm. if you can just uh, tell them about your journey like how, because i know you are somebody who didn't have any contacts like most of us like uh, you know you me everybody we started at a stage where we just knew the only thing that we knew that we wanted to do photography we had uh, you know a certain genre that we fell in love with and we wanted to continue doing that and yep. then from there on it was a hustle to you know get to that point where you can really excel into that and right. uh, you know i think you and me we were very clear about our genres you knew that you wanted to do for food photography since then so yep. Um, yep. you know just uh, if you could tell them about how you started and how you built to where you are now yeah okay so uh, it's actually a very interesting story uh because like what purva said uh i grew up wanting to be a lawyer and when i say i grew up wanting to be a lawyer i remember when i was i vividly remember when i was 6 years old uh someone asked me what i wanted to become and i said i wanted to become a lawyer um so that, that that's all i thought about throughout school throughout everything like everyone knew my friends knew my teachers knew my parents knew my family knew everybody knew i wanted to be a lawyer uh cut to 2005 when i joined uh, law school uh few 
weeks i would say a few months in i was like oh no i don't want to do law this is not for me um and it was a struggle because i didn't know what else i wanted to do because i mean 17 18 years of my life till then that's all i thought about so i never even explored anything else i never even thought oh okay you know what about this what about that so we struggled with that uh, with what to do <laughs> post law so we just continued in that you know i don't know phase for quite some time and uh, funnily enough uh, photography was something suggested by my dad uh my father suggested uh, one day he just walks into my room opens the door and says hey what about photography and uh, a, a little something about my dad uh, purva can uh, relate to this because our head of academics when he was studying was like this uh my dad is the kind of person is if he gives you an idea uh, don't shoot it down immediately try it and if it fails come back and say why uh, it failed but uh, don't shoot it down because they they have more experience and all of that you know the usual stuff elders tell you we have more experience and all of that so when my dad suggested photography i couldn't outright say no i don't want to do photography i didn't even know what it was because for me till then i had an uncle in the family who was a photographer but he was mostly i mean he was employed somewhere so he was doing all sorts of things he was doing portraiture he was doing uh events he was doing aerial photography uh so i mean i didn't really understand what photography was for me it was one was being a confused photographer like my uncle doing anything and everything uh, and then wedding photography and then of course your uh, photo studios that you have around um so i didn't really know what photography was i started my dad introduced me to the term commercial photography i was like wow what is commercial photography this is <laughs> so i started googling what is commercial photography and uh, all of that and i'll be very very blunt and honest with you guys i was not very interested but uh, while googling all of this i i found a photography school that was going to open in pune uh, and i was in pune at the time because i studied law in mumbai and at that point in my life i would have done anything to stay in pune because my girlfriend at that time now wife uh, was in pune so any other course anywhere else would mean i would have to go somewhere else uh, but uh, because this was in pune i mean no idea whether this this school is going to be good whether it's going to be worth it none of that it's in pune girlfriend's in pune this is where i'm going uh so i went to uh, went to my i mean i met the director there was a uh, education fair sort of thing in bombay i went there met the director of the school uh, at that point uh, and then when i met him of course i was i was convinced this is where i want to go because if you ever meet the guy he's one of the most charismatic uh, he's got a personality like you will fall in love with that personality the first time you meet him so i ended up joining the course so uh i did not hold a camera i mean when i said i didn't hold a camera of course i held like a point and shoot and your phone and all of that but i never held a actual dslr before joining the course that's how again to use a term that kids use now i was a noob i was a complete newbie when it came to photography when i joined photography school in fact my first dslr was bought one day before the course began it was a d nikon d7000 um so that's where it all started right and then of course once the course was over uh so i didn't grow up in india i grew up in the middle east uh so once the course was over it's not like i had a bunch of contacts or friends by then who had gone and done media courses or joined advertising or any of that i had to start from absolute scratch no contact no nothing so in fact it's what it's i'm back to doing what i did in 2013 because i'm in dubai and i'm trying to get work here uh i just emailed and called every restaurant and every cafe and every advertising agency in pune i had a notebook uh, and i say i it was me and akanksha both of us studied in here akanksha is another batchmate of us uh, akanksha and i worked together so we had this 
notebook where I would write down all the people that I got in touch with. And it was a notebook that had about 300 names in it um, of different ad agencies and, and all of that. Uh, 300 plus. I remember at one point I counted it, it was 300. And I was like, wow. Uh, but then it's basically calling them, emailing them, messaging them on Instagram, Facebook, wherever, wherever possible, I would get in touch with them. And uh, out of that 300, three of them converted into a photo shoot. Uh, I had meetings, some people, I think maybe about say 10, 15 people would have replied. But only three out of 300. So that's 1%. Right? That's 1% of the per pe people I reached out to that converted to a photo shoot. And if you guys are in Pune, some of you will know uh, Kapu Chocks. That was one of my first ones. So the guys who do cakes. There's La Boucher Do, which is a French, French bakery. And uh, there's another place. I forget the name. They were uh, Indian QSR restaurant. In some mall somewhere. I don't remember now where. So these were the three that converted to a shoot from that 300 list. But uh, it is that three shoots that helped me get more clients. Uh, not that they recommended me to anyone, but then it just added more images to my portfolio, which I could then reach out to more people. And uh, yeah, and then eventually work just started coming in. I mean, it reached a point as sometimes my wife makes fun of me because I say this, but uh, it reached a point where I didn't have to call anyone. I didn't have to message anyone. People would call me and be like, uh, hey, we like your work. We found your website and we want to do the shoot. Uh, that's how McDonald's happened. The agency that was handling McDonald's at the time, they just found me on, I think they Googled food photographer and found my website. Um, Indirectly, how I got Uber was also like that because I had done work for another client where the art director from that agency eventually joined Uber. But uh, they also just randomly Googled food, like the production house Googled food photographer Delhi and then found my website and yeah. But then now it's back to square one for me because I'm in Dubai, I'm trying to get work here. So it's back to cold calling and cold <laughs> emailing. The, the the bits I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, among the students, if you have any questions till now, so because both of us we can go on chatting. So, yeah. Ask some yeah. questions. We have you. a lot of things to ask you, right? But anyone, I'm sure Naman has a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Siddharth, Ashmi, anyone? I think Siddharth wants to say something. Even if you guys don't understand what I'm saying, just say that. Like, say, Thomas, we don't understand what you're saying. Can you start from the beginning? I won't do the entire thing, but we can start from the beginning. So, so as you started up with saying that you were like us only that who was not known to the industry. Correct. So, how did you manage to get more clients as you grow up in the industry? As you okay. said, you were having only three clients majorly, McDonald's yeah. and Uber and then how yeah. did you start it up and how did you build your profile? Because we also will be building up our profiles in another next year. So yeah. Majorly, I am not into the poor photography. I yeah. am interested in questions. So I also be in, to be in industry only. Okay. So how did you start to build your profile and how did you get more clients? Is, it is uh, compulsory to have a website or how did you? Okay. So um, I'll tell you how it, how it worked for me, right? Uh, when it came time for us to do our final portfolio in photography school, Urwa will remember this. Uh, I mean, she remember us complaining about this because she was doing photojournalism at the time. Uh, when it came time to doing our final portfolio, all of us were were supposed to go into the cabin of our head of academics and present our plan of you know what we want to do, what it is, what is our future, what do we want to specialize in, and all of that. So I walked into my head of academics cabin and I said, uh, I want to specialize in interiors and architecture. 
because I was really interested in it. Uh, long story short, he said no. <laughs> <laughs> and Purva knows, Purva knows that, you know, he's, he will say no like that. Uh, so he, he said no. And then he said, he suggested to me that I do uh, food and beverage. Uh, he's a food and beverage photographer himself. Uh, and apparently, according to him, I was a joker back then, but according to him, he said that uh, I have the discipline for food and beverage. I don't know what he saw in me to say I have discipline. Uh, I was one of those guys. We, we had late fee, by the way, coming to college. If we came yeah. here, college used to start at 10.30. And if you reach at 10.35, you have to pay a 50 rupee fine. Uh, so I was one of those guys who would almost every day pay that 50 rupees because... <laughs> There was no discipline. So I don't know how he reached this decision that I have the discipline to do it. But he said that I have the discipline to do uh, food and beverage photography. So uh, Purva will remember I walked out of that cabin and I was angry. I was That's fuming. when you gave us that dialogue of four years from now, I'm going to do this. I yeah. can't like complete the entire thing, but yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know, I, I was few. Everyone, I mean, a lot of people came out of that cabin fuming. Like, <laughs> Because their idea was shot down. Like I was like, I don't want to do food. Like everybody is doing food. I don't want to do food. And I don't like food photography. What is food photography? And even when we were doing the the module on food photography, it's not like I had great images. I my images were rubbish. I mean, I'm trying, still trying to find those images so I can post it out and say this was how I started. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's how it was. So he suggested food and beverage, and then at that point in my so that first day, obviously I was very angry. But the second day, I decided that, okay, if I'm going to do food and beverage, I'm going to kill it. You know, I, I have to kill it because I don't have a choice. I didn't finish my law, by the way. It's not like I have a backup degree. Uh, so I basically have no degree, no skill set, nothing. So photography is the only thing I have to bank on, right? I have to make this work. So then did a lot of research, a lot of self-study, uh, we had a, a, a food stylist who was a faculty who was helping us with our final portfolio. He's become a very good friend now. Then I used to call him sir. Now I call him my uh, He helped us with our portfolio and we made that first set of images. So I had about eight images when I began. Uh, whoever was asking. Uh, I had eight images in my portfolio when he passed out of photography school. Food images. I had other images as well. Still life and portraiture and stuff. But food images, I had about eight. And then I shot for these three clients, Copper Chops, La Boucher Door, and this other restaurant, which, excuse me, which helped me take the number of images to 15, right? And it's with that 15 images. It's like what I said, in, in the beginning, you have to reach out to people you want to shoot for, right? And I will suggest, if, if you want to be a food photographer, don't reach out to McDonald's they're not going to be interested in. And it's not that you may not have good work. I'm not going to comment on the quality of your work. It's just that you don't have the experience to shoot for a McDonald's. And when I say experience, again, I mean, I know a lot of people who say, oh, why do you need experience? Why do you need that? Um, they need somebody who's done this before, who's handled big production shoots. When I say big, big production, I'm talking about like, crores and crores of rupees. Like right now we're talking about my fees. I mean, when you pass out, you'd say my fees will be 10,000, 15,000 a day or whatever you decide. You want to charge one lakh, good for you. But we're talking about crores and crores of uh, money that goes into a campaign. When it, I mean, when you come to the Uber Eats World Cup campaign, I'll explain it to you. Uh, they, so they want somebody who's got that experience, not as a photographer, but the experience handling such a big production. Uh, who knows if something goes wrong, how to fix it on the day of the shoot, how to solve their problems. So when you start off as a photographer, you don't because you're always learning on the go. Uh, so reach out if you're, if you want to be a small, if you want to be a food photographer, reach out to your small cafes nearby or small restaurants nearby. I mean, I had it tougher with them because Instagram and Facebook were not that big. But now every cafe, every restaurant, your neighborhood one just down the road, they have an Instagram page and they want food images. Uh, it's become so much easier to get food work now because every restaurant, every cafe wants to have images on Instagram. 
so reach out to them message them call them irritate them and be like let's shoot let's shoot let's shoot you know if you find someone who's a young stylist perfect others initially you have to style yourself when we started a kangs and i were we did the styling ourselves obviously but now i don't style at all uh so that's how that's how you build your profile right slowly slowly you start getting uh more work that good work that you can add to your portfolio number one number two you have to constantly at least i would say at least for four five years you have to put in the effort and reach out to people you can't have an ego and say that no no i want people to call me my work is amazing i want people to call me. nobody knows you nobody is going to call you you can have a website and say okay i've done my website i have an instagram page people are going to call me it's not going to work even if even if you think that's going to work you know you're not, you're not going to get the big production shoots if you reach out to people and you say okay let's shoot or you come up with an idea and say i've got this idea for you here's my idea let's shoot and you execute those ideas then you're learning more then you're building your portfolio you have more creative images in your portfolio which a client is paying for There's nothing like it if a client is going to you know pay you 10000 bucks or 15000 bucks and you can build a creative portfolio nothing like it so then after a point of having say about 10 15 small restaurant clients and you know you have a body of work of about say 30 40 images then the biggest clients start approaching you why because you have a wide portfolio of very good images and they can see that 10 to 15 clients however big or small have already trusted you with their money right the biggest problem when you start off in photography is <coughs> excuse me the biggest problem is people are going to ask have you shot for someone before why do they ask you that question or why are they looking out to see if you've shot for someone before because they're paying you money i mean if you go and buy something from a store like say you buy a mobile phone right you you spend 20000 rupees on a mobile phone you want that mobile phone to work for you you want to be able to do everything you want to do so it's the same thing if the client is going to pay you 20000 they want to know that you know they're going to get images that they can use now if nobody has bought uh, let's let's call a brand mango right if nobody has ever bought a mango phone there are no reviews available you're going to think twice about buying that phone because you don't know what it's like you don't know what its features are you don't know if it's going to die in two days like in india sometime back there was that freedom 151 or freedom 51 phone which yeah. is a colossal failure <laughs> uh, so you have that nobody knows right so it's the same thing if you're going to spend if you yourself are going to spend money and you're going to expect something for that money the client is going to be the same if they're going to give you the money they want to know that it's worth it so as a beginner photographer you're always going to find it tough to find that first client second client third client fourth client but you have to keep at it you have to keep pushing 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 and then the bigger ones start coming I still remember. I think this was 2015. Uh, just doing this, we passed out in 2013. Uh, 2015 or 2016. I get an email from an agency. Uh, I forget the agency's name. They wanted uh, me to uh, give costing for a shoot for Starbucks. And I remember sitting in my chair. We, we were working out of a co-working space, and I remember just sitting in my chair and wondering, like, oh my god, really? Like, they want me to shoot for Starbucks? Like. it didn't come through but for me that itself was the achievement that itself was a big deal for me that i was shooting for small local restaurants we were moved to delhi by then i was shooting for small local restaurants and you know cafes and pubs and stuff like that but suddenly here somebody wants me to shoot for starbucks and it's going to be on their menu board i was like wow i did know i was ready to reach <laughs> go to that level but then that's just how it is you have to keep at it you have to keep pushing so when you say uh you whoever asked the question mentioned you want to do food photography uh, sorry fashion photography yeah one of the most important things you need to know to be a fashion photographer is of course you're going you're going to learn lighting you're going to learn composition you're going to learn all of that in photography school but it is very important that you know and understand fashion like for me i'm a food photographer i need to know and understand food i don't have to be able to cook it but i need to know what is a good looking tomato and what is a bad looking tomato 
right? If somebody comes and puts a tomato in front of me, I have to be able to decide whether that's good looking or not. If the the food stylist, a lot of times the food, st- I have, I have food stylists. I'm not trying to boast here or anything. For sometimes food stylists will be on other shoots, and they'll call me and they'll be like, "Okay, we're stuck here. How do I do this?" And then I'll tell them, "Okay, I don't know, but try this, try this, try this." You need to have that information. You need to know your field, not just the photography aspect of it. You need to know how food is going to react. So if you mix it with water, if you mix it with oil, if you mix it with something else, you need to understand how that food is going to react. So when it comes to fashion, you need to know fashion. You need to know what is fashion, why is fashion, how is fashion, everything. You need to look at fashion photographers, and you need to follow models, stylists, makeup artists. Uh, start following uh, blogs like Business of Fashion and follow editorial magazines. And it's it's very easy to say I want to be this particular photographer. Like say food or fashion or automobile or any of those things, but you really need to know the inside out of that particular industry, not just the photography bit of it. I hope that answer made sense. If I did, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. And sir, can I have one more question? Sure. I'll try to keep my answer shorter. Yes. Yeah. So, so as you said, you have been shooted in Delhi. Yeah. So where you are shooted because I am currently in Delhi. I am from my hometown is Delhi. Oh, okay. I stay in Vasant Kunj. Okay. Yeah. So I I I I stay in Vasant Kunj. We have a we opened a studio. Uh, unfortunately, one month before the lockdown last year. Uh, <laughs> so it's locked and shut and collecting dust now. But that's in Chaturpur. So I've been here since two thousand fourteen. I mean, there I've been in Delhi since 2014. Uh, I yeah, but then now because I'm married and my wife works in Dubai, I keep traveling to Dubai. So right now I'm here, not under lockdown. Yeah. So, uh, like you just uh, said something very interesting that you need to know, uh, you know, the genre that you are working in. I, I remember when. So by that time, uh, you know, I was doing my. Uh, this thing i was shooting outside but i remember you guys had a styling workshop and where the first thing that were you were made to do was cut vegetables into different right. shapes and sizes yeah. so that is the kind of training which is actually required and it is yeah. something that uh, you know each one of us should put ourselves into that place that you have to so uh, you know that really helps a lot because at that point i know that you know we have been put through a lot of exercises which at that point we felt that oh, why are we doing this we are photography students why are we doing this but i think somewhere um, you know down the line we do realize that now it makes more sense like now yeah. we know the importance of those small little things that we were meant to do because you when you end up into an industry there are you have to be prepared for so many things yeah so um, so from your like uh, the clients and everything but uh, i want to ask that, like on behalf of everybody i guess is that mm-hmm. uh, as we spoke it it all started in 2013 when you actually started going out and started shooting so through these years like we have met uh, at different intervals mm-hmm. and every time that we meet if there, there's a point in discussion where we discuss about how things have changed and it's mm-hmm. so strange to know that every 2 3 years there are some things which are changing and yep. uh, i can i know for a fact that you have adopted uh, you know adapted yourself to a lot of change there mm-hmm. was pune where you started then you moved to delhi from delhi then you are now uh, you know shuffling between delhi and dubai and all of that so yep. there is a lot of change that has been you, that you have seen so the adaptability that uh, is there how you shift from one thing to the other is something that i would like if you can share with the students Yeah, I mean, uh, I think one of the the so one of the toughest things you'll do once you finish photography school, of course, is finishing photography school, right? Because then it's it's blank. What do you do? Uh, how do you get work? Because some people go on and assist. Some people take on a full time job. It works differently for everyone. Uh, for me, I didn't have the liberty to go and assist assist because I needed to start making money because of certain financial issues. 
uh, I needed to start making money. So assisting was not an option. Uh, so then, yeah, you know, you sort of create this, uh, this method to try and get work. Like I said, we reached out to 300 plus people. Uh, to get work and then within a year we moved to Delhi uh, reason being Pune is not a very big market uh, if you want to shoot for the biggest clients and bigger advertising campaigns and stuff like that you need to be in Bombay let's put it that way you need to be in Bombay first and then we personally did not me personally I did not like Bombay so much um, so the second best option in India is moving to Delhi uh, so again, moved to a brand new city where I knew even less people than I did in Pune. Um, and again, it was just the same thing. It was just messaging. And, and I realized in Pune, more people reply to your emails and calls and messages. The bigger the, the, bigger the city, the less you can expect people to respond to your calls and emails and stuff like that. Um, but then... The advantage of being in Delhi was I was able to make certain contacts in terms of which stylists, uh, certain art directors, certain creative directors. So it 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 sort of became. Uh, so it was no longer just somebody reaching out to me. If somebody reached out to the stylist, then the stylist would recommend me. If somebody reached out to that creative director, then the creative director would recommend me. Um, so it worked like that when we came to. Delhi, you know, I mean, it took us a while for sure, uh, but we were able to reach that uh, that point where we sort of had a little network um, where it became an I scratch your back, you scratch mine sort of situation. But of course, because we like each other's work, I mean, I wouldn't scratch anyone's back if I don't like their work. Um, so that's how that happened. And then, of course, I mean, you know, like what Purva said, times change like now, I mean, post COVID, uh, clients don't come to the shoot anymore. And one of my very strong terms and conditions in my, when I send out a quotation is the client has to be there at the shoot to approve images. Because if they can't, if they're not there to approve images, then the decision is mine. So the minute I say that most of the time, the client or the agency will be there to, you know, approve images as they're being shot. But now I don't want the clients to come on set. Like, I need to protect my team. I don't want the agency to come on set. I need to protect my team. Um, so we live stream the shoot, basically. Uh, just like how we are doing this now. I'm, I uh, I have a laptop that's set up. And I, I share my screen. And as each image is being shot, they're seeing the same screen that I do. Uh, and then it's on video call. So we can... Uh, communicate about what we are liking, what we are not liking and stuff like that. But I must say that what that has allowed me to do is I now have clients in the US uh, because of COVID and I was able to remote shoot with a client who was in Delhi only, but we didn't want them coming to the studio or they didn't want to come to the studio because I was able to do that with a smaller to say more local clients uh, I was able to do that so then when the job came from the US uh, it just became very easy it's like yeah I mean this is this is our flow this is how we do it so of course change is going to keep coming but it's about how you adapt to it how you how quick you are on your feet and it comes back to what I said about having experience right which clients hire you for your experience not for the, the work you do, I mean, of course, the work is important, but it's got more to do with your experience, a whole bunch of other things. It's like uh, at one point, uh, me and Purva and all of us, we were joking and saying that we are photographers, maybe uh, 5% of our time, you know, yeah. when we are actually photographing. But apart from that, we are salesmen, we are marketing, we are accountants, we are HR, we are production people, we are, we are everybody else. You know, we're cook, maid, we're everything. And photographer is just 5% of the job. So the quicker you are able to adapt to changing situations, um, the easier it becomes. Anybody has any uh, question from their side? All right. 
Uh, should we uh, have a look at your uh, Uber campaign? Yeah. That, that was a big one. So Uber, there's two. I'll quickly do show you Uber, the first one, and then we'll do the World Cup yeah. campaign because I think that's more. Okay, so Uber Eats, um, like I said, how I explained to you how it's a small, uh, very small industry. I did a shoot before this for uh, Leonardo Olive Oil. Um, a very simple shoot. Let me show you that. Can you guys see this image? Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically this, right? Bottle of oil in front, uh, plate of food at the back. Uh, and they were doing an advertising campaign based on this. Um, so the ad agency that was uh, doing this was Low Lintas. Uh, the art director from the agency uh, at Low Lintas at the time had moved to Uber as art director. Um, so then when Uber wanted to do a shoot, he suggested me to the team because we'd already done one shoot together and it worked. I mean, they, the client really liked the images and stuff like that. So they were like, you know what, go with Thomas and Akanksha because they were really good at what they do. This is what I mean by it's a small industry. Uh, you shoot for one client, one agency, they shift jobs, they move somewhere else, you end up getting that client as well. Um, so this was basically a shoot where they wanted us to do a library of images. This wasn't a campaign per se, but they wanted to do a library of images. Now, what is a library of images? It basically means they want a bank of images or they want a number of images that there is no specific use for immediately, but they want to have it in case some marketing collateral comes up or you know they have some campaign that they want to do. So they just want some images ready with them that they can quickly you know, put together in an email or, or a newsletter or a new uh, launch that they're doing or any of those things. Um, so they wanted about, I think we did about 25 images uh, for them. And it's basically uh, images like this, you know, uh, like you can see here, it says festive traditional. This is just a reference image of how they wanted it. Uh, a house party. Uh, I mean, if you remember these terms, I'll show you the image that relates to this. This was festive traditional. This was house party. Um, weekend brunch again if you remember these images or take screenshots while i'm showing you then you'll when i show you the final images you'll un, you'll connect the dots um weekday dinner you can see this is not a dinner reference it's very bright and whatever but um so then they send this as the reference for mood and lighting like that's the reference for the kind of image they want to do but that's the reference for mood and lighting um so they sent me a bunch of, uh, you know, references like this and said, so these are the different shots, right? If you see like office lunch, delivery shot, receiving shot, late night lunch, these were the, the name of the shots that they wanted. Um, and then we had to execute, right? Um, so when it came to executing this one was a little difficult in the sense we had to do, uh, Akanksha and I had to sort of handle everything. There was no production in place, so we had to handle everything right from hiring the models to hiring the stylist to hiring the location, uh, coordinating with uh, the light guys and all sorts of things, right? Uh, so these were the images that we ended up doing. Um, this is, I don't remember which category this was, but I think this was like basic uh, friends ordering. So if you notice that a lot of the the food, what it is in is all delivery uh, packaging or takeaway packaging. So we made sure we weren't using actual glasses for most of the shots. You have your the chili flakes and oregano still in that delivery cups. Uh, so basically what we're trying to say is your pizza and your drinks came delivered, chips you had lying around. You just put that in a bowl. Um, okay, I don't know. 
okay i don't know it's a smaller image but can you see, i mean sort of pixelated but this yeah. is that uh, brunch image that they wanted to do uh, let me see if i can find a better one of that there will be pictures is that better yeah yeah so again you can see like we have this box in front which says uber eats you know this is all food this is the brunch image right which they wanted to do mm-hmm. um so all of these images are okay another thing about food photography right they're all tripoded in the sense all your images are taken with the camera on a tripod um why because uh, your even though it's a lifestyle image the focus is the food so you can't change angle on the food because that's how the food is placed for the camera so the minute you start changing angles then the food no longer looks good uh the focus is not the three models over here the focus is the the plate of sandwiches the vada the dokla the gunpowder idli and all that stuff right um so you, so you get an idea right of uh the bank of images like it it it's not particular for a camp if you remember there was festive traditional um so here you can see like gulab jamun and imarti and all okay so this is what i mean when i say that uh, you need to know food uh, purva can watch for this that she would have never heard the words imarti coming out of my mouth i'm so proud okay <laughs> till till 2013 but then now i just i need to know I've I've never had this in my life. I know it looks something like a jalebi, uh, but I need to know the difference between the two. Like if the client says imarti, they want imarti on a plate. I can't have jalebi on a plate. If the client yeah. says they want jalebi, and because I grew up in the Middle East, all most of this food is alien to me. Uh, but I had to make the effort to know what it is that the client wants. And again, see, we have paneer over here. I don't like paneer, but this paneer here. Uh, <laughs> personal opinions of on food does not matter when you shoot, whether you like it or not. You have to make it look good. Uh, so this was festive, traditional. This was the house party uh, image where you have like, I mean, this is how biryani comes nowadays, right? Like, I don't know if you guess yeah. that biryani by kilo, but it comes in this handy. Uh, this guy sitting here. I don't know if you can see this guy here. this guy is actually from the agency <laughs> uh, these 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 four were models but they weren't doing what they were supposed to do properly so he decides to go and sit here and he's basically giving them cues of what to do and how to do it stuff like that um this one was that uh, week day yeah. dinner i think that's what it was called um Yeah, so this is all like created, right? We rented a a farmhouse, uh, for about fifty forty thousand a day, fifty forty thousand forty fifty thousand a day, and then we created all of this. So all of this is in that one farmhouse. Sorry, we'll come to that. Uh, and then apart from the lifestyle images, they wanted some food images. Uh, this was supposed to be office lunch. hence the daylight kind of light that's there um again see it's it's like in packaging right like so they want to give it that connect the phone is there so in case later on they want to add something on the screen saying now order now 20% off if ordering to office or whatever right they launch some campaign like that they can just put it here on the phone um this is again another one this was uh these are more graphic images that they can use as backgrounds like it serves no purpose really but in terms of an advertising campaign and all it won't work but it's basically if you want to put it on a background if you want to put it as a banner uh these work so this is basically idli and uh, curry leaves and then this one was with uh, samosas uh i mean it was a fun shoot we did 25 images in 5 days uh again huge campaign shoot lot of fun 
uh, after that, this is more interesting for me because uh, after that, uh, we did this, the, the preview, the library shoot we did in about, say, February. Um, and then Uber, I don't know if you guys remember, but Uber was one of the major sponsors for the ICC World Cup in 2019, yeah. the Cricket World Cup. Um, so Uber had its own, Uber Rides is what they call it, even though we just call it, I mean, regular people call it Uber. Uber Rides had its own campaign, Uber Eats had, it, had its own campaign. So the Uber Rides campaign was obviously with Virat Kohli at the time, he's the brand ambassador. And that was shot by Colston Julian, and uh, who is like 30, 35 years in the industry. And Uber Eats campaign was shot by yours truly. So I'm always very proud to say this, you know, like... Uh, uh, the rides campaign was shot by easily one of the biggest uh, fashion photographers out there. And then I was lucky enough to shoot the, the World Cup campaign. Now, how I ended up getting the World Cup campaign was very interesting. So Uber has their own in-house creative team. Um, and it's a huge team. Uh, it's not necessary. Like the first time I shot for them, I didn't meet all of them. I just knew like four or five of them. Uh, when it came to the World Cup campaign, uh, Ogilvy is an advertising agency. They are the ones who handle Uber. Um, so when it came to pitching ideas for uh, the Uber Eats campaign, uh, Ogilvy came up with all sorts of ideas of having uh, Rajkumar Rao and Susan Singh Rajput being uh, delivery guys. And I don't remember the exact uh, storyline, but then they had come up with that sort of a uh, campaign. You know, we'll get Rajkumar Rao, we'll get Swan Singh Rajput, they'll be delivery guys, they'll go deliver food. Something, something, right? There was some big story behind it. Um, and then the in-house creative team came up with their own uh, uh, campaign as well, which was called Home Advantage. Uh, this doesn't, it doesn't say it here. Um, so, uh, when the in-house brand team weighed the two ideas, they liked the the internal idea better than Ogilvy's idea. So when it came to executing this, uh, because it was a very last minute thing, like the World Cup was going to happen in about three weeks when I got the phone call. Uh, so this is just the beginning of uh, production. So three weeks is not a long time for a huge campaign like this. Uh, uh, the first thing the guy, I, had, I, I haven't spoken to him before that, even though he was from the Uber creative team. I didn't know him earlier. But the first thing he told me was, uh, uh, Thomas, I am calling you and I'm not talking to any other photographer because you shot the last campaign. The, you, you did the library of images for us. So you know what we like and what we don't like. You know what the Uber language is. So we're not going with anyone else. Like whatever costing you give me, whatever price you're giving me, that's it. Because we don't have time. Because the more you hunt for photographers, the more you try to work out on pricing, it's not going to work. You know, everybody is going to give you different pricing. You're going to haggle with everyone, negotiate with everyone. It's just going to take time. And the, I mean, you can't push the World Cup. The World Cup is going to happen when it happens, but you need time to execute your campaign. Um, so you, these are very detailed ones. You get something called treatment, which is basically, I mean, forget the, all of this is not very important. I mean, you'll get it for first year, second year of photography school. This is not important. Uh, you'll come to it later. But then this is basically what they say, right? Look and feel. Now, if you see, this is a deck they created before even speaking to me. But it's already got one of the images that we did from the library. So they liked it to say that even if they send this to other photographers, my image is there saying that, you know what, this is the kind of look and feel that we want for the images. Um, this is basically what the campaign is supposed to be, right? You have a bunch of friends sitting on a couch with a table in front and the stadium at the back. Okay, this is basically the campaign. Now, so this is again a mock-up where they put things, if you notice, this is not actually all on this table. It's all been put, added in Photoshop. Uh, but then, you know, stuff like this, this is what they wanted. Uh, and then, okay, so they wanted a father and son thing. They wanted a couple thing. This is also one of the uh, images we did in the library, by the way. 
um so you know they, these are the different categories of images they wanted they wanted a friends image they wanted a nervous moment they wanted a hooked moment they wanted a celebration moment uh and all of that right and then okay again uh before very important question that i remember asking him was during this is this is a night stadium feel like it's at night i asked him do you want it to be night or do you want it to be day he said we want it to be day which means the composite that this the, the reference image that they're showing me is for night but they wanted it to be during the day and why do you ask such a question because how you light it is going to be very different compared to how you would light it when it comes to being a night shot uh so these are just few of those images uh that we did um i wish i had i mean if you go on my uh, instagram you will see behind the scenes of this you will see how it was shot so uh all of this the carpet the couch the bag the table the people the models the the, the poof all of this was shot in a studio everything else that you're seeing was done in post so the stadium and the grass and the people the people also very important to say the people also was all added in post why do i say people also because the stadium picture that we had did not have people oh. so we had to add people in the stands in post um so this was one of those moments where you're saying uh, i don't know if you guys some of you recognize this model she was there in that vivo ad with uh, ranbir vivo oppo one of them where they are dancing yeah. uh this is that model um so yeah it's it's all about you know doing again see i i was hired as a food photographer but if you see the food's not even seen you right. know uh but then it wasn't important to them uh it wasn't they, they didn't care that i didn't have you know a lot of lifestyle images i did that last shoot for them which was mm-hmm. primarily a food shoot they loved it this campaign had nothing to do with food but they were like we are, we are not going anywhere else we know you can deliver what we want so you see the way we if if you notice like if you know a little bit about lighting i'm sure you did natural light and all of that you guys will see sun is coming from this side so you'll see the same thing reflects on them here like you'll see shadows falling this way um so because the the stock image that we had of the sky the sun was here mm-hmm. so when i'm lighting it in the studio i had to make sure i had a duplicate sun here to replicate that whole feeling uh so yeah these were some of the images that we did uh i mean it's almost as if we are the tv and we are looking at what's happening so this is very typical of the kind of reactions you would get uh when people are watching the match uh fun fact uh, the shoes that this guy is wearing is my shoes uh because the stylist didn't have good shoes or they didn't like any of the shoes so uh, they came to me and asked me can we borrow your shoes i said okay so my shoes went on a hoarding um but yeah like again typical it's kind of reactions that you'll have uh during and very difficult right i mean it's it's easy to think that you know okay you're watching a match and you're getting this but then you have to really direct them uh like your hand can't be too high it can't be too low uh this expression has to happen while the ball is mid air uh no i'm joking the ball was added later uh we didn't <laughs> we don't we don't <laughs> leave leave things to chance like that uh, we took a picture of the ball separately in the same light yeah. and we just added it later in photoshop um uh, all of this said things have to happen this is supposed to be the couple uh you know I don't I don't know what category this was supposed to be but yeah again this is one of those images. Uh so what we also had to do was Uber uh, Uber in India is actually Uber APAC which is Uber South Asia. Um uh, so the head office is in uh India but then they also the same office works for Uber Bangladesh and Uber Sri Lanka as well. Um uh, so when they launched the this campaign in Bangladesh we had to change the color of the jerseys. to green and remove the india uh, signage we didn't have to add text but we just had to change the color 
so green and red for bangladesh and when we went to changed it for sri lanka we did uh, dark blue and yellow again all in post the image stays the same we just change the color in post so yeah that's how uh, the uber eats campaigns happened but then un- unfortunately uber eats then sold to zomato so they don't shoot yeah. any questions about uber i mean it was one of my fun shoots it's uh, again went on holding very happy uh, feeling yes this, someone this picture was for the world cup 2019 that was to be held in england correct so so uh, very out of the way it was and have you ever met some of the cricketers when you were doing this shoot no i had nothing to do with the cricketers while doing the shoot uh because they weren't even involved in the campaign i mean if uh, they decided to use see i'll be honest with you right if they decided to use virat kohli for this shoot i wouldn't be the photographer hired they were hire someone who's worked with virat kohli before or a photographer that virat kohli would suggest himself um more often than not it will be the photographer virat kohli is comfortable with uh they won't even reach out to me they do they won't even ask me like for example if uh, see and i'll explain why to you because say for example um this shoot to put all of this together uh was a two day shoot but let's say this shoot cost about uh, not let's say i know how much it cost it's about 25 lakhs just to put the shoot together uh and it happened in bombay uh the shoot cost 25 lakhs when i was shooting it if virat kohli is going to be on set and another photographer is going to come not including virat kohli's fees but easily this same shoot would have cost uber eats say about 5 crores so when it when it becomes a 5 crore photo shoot they are not going to hire a photographer who's going to do it in 25 lakhs they are going to hire a photographer who's handled a 5 crore shoot before they are going to hire a photographer who's handled a shoot with virat kohli before because that's a very different ball game altogether working with celebrities uh, is a completely different ball game you don't have the freedom and time and all sorts of things i'm sure purva and uh the rest of the faculty will explain those things to you but you don't have that kind of time when you have with celebrities to do images so you need you need guys who've done this before who have who will give you the final image in 5 minutes uh yeah so no i didn't meet any cricketer all right anybody else has a question anyone uh mansi maybe if you want to mansi alo subhash the other faculties if you want to add something yeah i mean if you guys are getting bored you can say that also like uh, <laughs> thomas i have one question okay who's alo. who's asking alo alo ah, ah, yeah all. okay alo uh, yeah. just give me one uh, minute alo you can continue i'll just be back yeah Yeah, look, you were saying. So, how much retouching usually goes into when it comes to food photography? Um. Okay, so these these images I I'm showing you here are there is quite a bit of uh, retouching, but um, let's say something like this, right? I mean, mm-hmm. this is majority. uh of the kind of work that i do i mean i don't do an uber eats and and uh, berus that's not my everyday work right that that's yeah. your once a month or once in two months kind of work but then majority is images like this much simpler images or even the images that i did for kfc uh, mm-hmm. there is a bit of retouching that goes into it uh, mm-hmm. but not a lot um like how do i explain this this okay say pizza okay mm-hmm. i know everybody likes pizza and then you know pizza surprisingly pizza was one of my most liked in pictures on instagram i was shocked mm-hmm. i was like they're not liking the picture they're just liking the fact that it's pizza because no other picture has got that many likes on my 
this thing and i have better pictures on my instagram i know <laughs> so the fact that it got like double of whatever image i got i know they were just happy. they were liking the fact that it's pizza okay. but pizza is an uh, is a, a, a food item that needs a lot of research mm-hmm. uh, especially the ones that you see from dominos and pizza hut and and stuff like that see if it's your neighborhood cafe and stuff like that it's fine if it's a little rustic if it's a little you know uneven if it's a little uh, burnt on the side and stuff like that it's fine but with pizza hut and dominos and all they have very high standards of what their pizza should look like to the extent it can start to look like plastic okay um uh, but you have to you know draw that fine line like say for example look at just this image right yeah uh if you look at the basil leaf yeah exactly very very rarely you will get a perfect looking yeah. basil leaf like that hmm. especially especially in india it's very difficult hmm. you will have spots here you will have a tear you will have a crack you will have all of that so in photoshop you have to fix all those things because somebody like a pizza hut or somebody like a dominos you will not want it to look cracked to look uh, blemished with like black spots on it and all of that. so that way there's a lot of uh, photoshop that goes into it uh, mm-hmm. now say for example if this was actually for a uh, pizza hut or dominos i can tell you a lot of things they'll fix on this pizza one they won't want their sauce to be this dark right mm-hmm. they'll actually say take some more veggies from here and cover this sauce up they don't want it to be so dark you see this little hole here in the corn mm-hmm. they last to cover that up Mm-hmm. um here also they'll say cover that up this uh darkened crust over here they won't want they'll want this to be uh this to be a perfect uh curve over here they do, they won't want this to be straight like that so all those details you know when you, the the bigger the client the bigger uh the campaign the bigger uh, the more the money they are going to spend on it the more perfect they are going to want their uh, images but at the same time if you do images for yourself mm-hmm. um like this this is i just did this it's a personal image you let a lot of things fly because th- this is more natural this is more how food should be um uh, like in a sense this is not a perfect cinnamon stick mm-hmm. uh so when the stylist is putting it she asked me are we okay with the stick i said yeah because we are trying to say that this is something somebody made at home so if you're going to say that somebody made this at home it's not going to be a perfect cinnamon stick i don't want to do a, a amul or mother dairy or any one of those kind of uh, you know perfect looking ice cream or perfect looking popsicles i want it to look like it's something somebody made at home <coughs> so it it actually the amount of re- retouching actually depends on who the client is one Uh, what they want to achieve too and three more importantly what the food actually is or what the product actually is like certain products you have to retouch you have to make it look right some you don't need to do much at all okay uh, thomas uh, good afternoon thomas this is subhash ya yeah? hi subhash uh, to continue what you were saying uh do you have a creative say with regard to uh, when a client says this is how it should be and uh, you suggest them that uh, you know uh, otherwise uh, do clients uh, consider that or uh, does it always have to be that uh, you have to um, agree to what the clients have uh, clients are saying like um, for example you said that uh, the crust has to be round but could you convince them that this is how a pizza should look and then they say yeah i agree with you or uh, is uh, just because uh, they are clients and they are paying you should, do, do we always have to agree with them i mean i'm just it's just that, maybe that, it's a that's a no no that's a very good question um, um i'm trying to there are multiple situations coming to mind so i'm just trying to um a lot of times the client will take your perspective into consideration if they understand and trust that you are the 
expert right okay. if they if they trust you and believe that you are the expert because you are a food photographer you will know better they will take your point of view into consideration they may not agree with it or we may not do it but they will give you that time uh, to understand what you're trying to say and you know they'll be like because a lot of times i'll have clients when i'll be like okay how do you like this image uh, they'll be like you know what about this and before i can even give an answer they'll be like you're the expert you say you know what is good what is not good uh, excuse the language but there are some clients who are absolutely anal in the sense they will say this is what i want i don't care who you are what you are you are a technician for me like i can't photograph food myself which is why i hired you if i could do it myself i do it myself you have clients like that also <coughs> so in those situations yeah you know they are sort of paying you and it's their vision and how they want things to be so then you end up doing that um but then there also comes a point in your career where you are able to tell the client no you know um do it this way and you say no i'm not going to do it then it becomes a little bit of an ego war on set and it comes down to how how much we, how much you're ready to push that that ego war and if if purva can watch for this i i can throw a lot of ego in a lot of places <laughs> so i've had these ego i've had these ego wars with clients i've said i've even at one point i even told the client back that uh, send me your account details i'm sending you your money back right now i'm leaving um i'm not saying this is what you should do i'm not saying this is the attitude you should have uh, unless you can follow through with such a uh threat uh don't make that threat ever you know um but yeah it it really depends shoot to shoot client to client uh i'd say initially most of the time they're not going to listen to you um but then with time like i said the more you know about food the more confident you are able to talk about it the more they believe you um like if you if you try to convince very simply right if you know that nowadays pizza are not round round is a very old style nobody does that anymore now everybody is doing square or the new trend is square for example if you know that because you are in the industry and you you are following a lot of images and then you tell the client that the client will be like hmm, interesting i've seen that you know but if nobody has seen that it's square and it is actually not square then you tell the client no it should be square it will be like what the hell are you talking about doesn't make any sense so it really it really really depends uh i'll give you another example when it came to uh the world cup campaign right this one uh there was a little of back and forth that was happening between me and the creative team in terms of retouching okay you know what let's fix this let's fix that let's do this let's do that uh then from nowhere the brand team shows up okay the brand team is basically the the marketing team or the brand custodians you know they look after the the how the brand is perceived by the public uh they decided to take the image and uh, do an edit themselves and send it back to me and say we want it to look like this and it looked horrible by the way because brand custodians or brand the brand team is not supposed to be getting into the creative or getting getting into the the photography aspect of it so it looked horrible i mean it's like how when we start in photography school you know like contrast 100% <laughs> you know just kill the details and you know all increase saturation and everything is just too loud and uh, jetang for lack of a better word uh <laughs> that's the kind of uh, edit they sent me and i was like okay really so i sent them back an email and i said you know what i can do this if this is what you guys actually want however this is not uber language this is not the kind of look and feel that uber does no, no uber in any part of the world is doing images like this uh, you're going in a completely opposite direction of what you're doing Uh, of what you guys set out to start doing i you know i gave the full list of stuff uh 
immediately someone from the creative team sent an email and said, Thomas, you're right. Let me speak to the brand team and get back to you. And then, you know, by the end of the day, the brand team and said, you know, you're right. What you said is correct. Ignore our previous email. Um, so it really comes down to how much they trust you and believe you. Because see, sometimes clients don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> just because okay, they're paying uh, you does not... Yeah, sorry. Yeah. If I can just add to that, uh, Sachin, one of our uh, faculties, he has a question, is that uh, how much of a knowledge do you need to have of other genres like uh, lifestyle and people, especially when you are doing a campaign like uh, Uber Eats? How do you prepare for that? I'd say it's very important. Um, because for me, as Purva would know, I work with Akanksha and Akanksha is a people and fashion photographer. So for us, it's an advantage, right? Uh, there is a secret, uh, I mean, not a secret, we keep joking about it. Uh, I even wrote about it on my Instagram. When it comes to shoots that involve people, but the prime focus is food or beverage, you know, it's a lifestyle image, but the focus is food and beverage or even something like this. I will take care of everything till the models come on set. Once the models come on set, I go stand in a corner and a Kanksha takes over. Because I can't deal, I mean, I, this is not, I'm not proud of this, but I can't deal with models. Uh, in the sense, if they don't instantly do what I want them to do, I have a very short temper at that moment. And you can't get angry with models because that just ruins the mood of the, the shoot. They are not going to be happy doing it anymore. Yeah. Um, so I would say it is very important that you know other genres. Like in terms of, you know, how to light and how to uh, uh, compose the set and all of that, I can take care of. But when it comes to this, the simple fact of directing the models to get what the client wants in the picture, I can't do that. I mean, I can if they'll do it, give it to me in the first shot or the second shot. But then if you have to keep taking images and you have to keep doing, you know, uh, that sort of thing, then, yeah, no, I can't. Okay. So, uh, anyone else? Yeah, oh, there's one last question that I want to ask from my side. So, yeah. uh, you, we have been, like you have mentioned uh, that you and Akansha, you work together. And I know that mm -hmm. after school, you decided that both of, both of you want to start working together. So, mm -hmm. uh, it's very, like I know for a fact that healthy competition is something which is really important and uh, you know it's like within all of us like our batchmates I think we can say that all of us have had a healthy competition and uh, somewhere each one of us is just helping each other in their own particular thing every time we we are stuck up with something the first people that we know is to just call uh, call each other ask about if we can help in some way and uh, most importantly, like talking about working with like two people coming together and working um, into an industry where there, sometimes it becomes a lot about, uh, you know, who is the actual person behind the camera. Like this is yeah. something that we used to joke in school that, okay, I was the one who pressed the shutter. So this picture belongs to me. And we have yeah. like, yeah. we have multiple images that are, that look exactly the same, but the people that have shot are different. So, uh, you know, when you are talking about, uh, you know, working together, what kind of an advice would you give to all of the, them? Because I even I tell my students that if at all you end up making good friendships in school and uh, when you are doing learning photography, if you can build it up and take it to another level after that also, just give it a shot. So yeah. Sometimes, you know, not every time you can do things all by yourself. You yeah. need people around you to, uh, you know, go to a certain stage. So what will be your advice? Um, my, my very first advice is don't do it just because you're friends. Um, uh -huh. Because that's not going to work. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's like that saying, right? Don't do business with family. Yeah. Um, it's very similar to that. Like, don't, don't, don't start doing it because you guys are friends. Start if you guys are going to do it. Of course, being friends adds to the whole equation. But you need to do it because you guys add value to each other. 
um, let me explain. When me and Akanksha started off, uh, one is there is no bigger critic of my work than Akanksha. Like she is the first one to rip through my images, and you know, say this is not right, that looks bad, this is this, that is this. She's the first one to do that, and no holds bar. I mean, there's no holding back. Uh, I don't. It's, it's it's the kind of feedback is I don't care for your emotions. It's all about the image. Now, if you're friends, uh, then you know if you have that ego that oh you know how how could you know you say this about my work and I thought we were friends and my feelings are hurt. It's not going to work because when it comes to photography, the friendship takes a backseat. Uh, it's about being professional. So we are one, the biggest critics for each other. Uh, if anybody is going to say something bad about her images, it's going to be me first. If anybody is going to say something bad about my images, it's me first. To the point where sometimes we're at a food show. She's got nothing to do. She's just chilling on set. Uh, I will think the image is done, and I'll call her and go like, you know, what do you think? And then she'll give me like a horrible critique of the images, and I lose it. I get angry. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, how dare she? <laughs> You know, but it's only in that moment, and then I I make an effort to understand what she's saying, make those changes in the image, and then I realize that the images become so much better. Um, the same thing again, how we complement each other, like something like this World Cup campaign or the other uh, image. I don't think oh she's calling me. Uh, I don't think she. Uh, I would have been able to pull off. The images this well, if uh, she was not there, because everything else I can do, like I've, 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 you know, I've directed the 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 stylists and the set designers and your art directors and uh, you know coordinating with the retoucher. I'm lighting the entire thing. You know, I'm taking care of all of that. I have no problems there. But when it comes to finally taking that shot and directing the models and encouraging them and you know cheering them on and all of that, that's not I me. Mean, Pura can tell you that's not my personality. I can't. I can't do it. Like I keep yeah. telling people, when it comes to food, if I don't like it, I throw it in the bin and put another one. Uh, <laughs> can't do that with models. I can't throw models in the bin. So we have to work with what we've got. Uh, yeah. So in those situations, yeah, it really helps to have. Uh, but yeah, don't do it if because you're friends and right now is the easy thing to do. Because I know a lot of people who've done it. My assistants, for example, uh, two of my assistants started to decided to start working together uh, because you know they were my assistants and you know, they were friends or whatever. It hardly lasted a year. Egos came in between and money came in between and all those things came in between and then. They, doesn't even it didn't even last a year, yeah. but then it can work. I mean, uh, Purva will know. Uh, we have Vaishnav and Apeksha from the junior batch, uh, fantastic photographers doing celebrity work, and there's Manas and Parth also. Yeah. Uh, and it is it, like it will work if you guys from the beginning say egos are not going to come in the way. Uh, one ego cannot come in the way. Money disputes cannot come in the way. Uh, two important things. If you're going to have money disputes that, oh, no, how can you take more? How can I take more? It's just trust, right? If, 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 if you guys can trust each other and if you guys can leave ego at home, then it will work. No, no problems there. I think we were on your uh, personal work folder. Can we just have a look at some of your personal images? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Can I have a, I have a question? Yes, yes, please. Uh, yes, so which jersey you prefer to, which gear you prefer for food photography? Which gear? You prefer and you use for food photography? Uh, I will use whatever is available. That's always been my approach. Purva, you can remember from photography school also when we had to take equipment out of the equipment room. 
when we get an assignment we'll get an assignment everybody will rush to the equipment room i will wait outside once everything is done i'll go in and go like okay what's left um uh, but yeah i mean if you're really interested i can tell you i use a nikon d850 uh, that's my own camera sometimes we rent a uh, hasselblad or pezon depending on the shoot and my go to lens for food photography is the 85 mm tilt shift lens but again like there's no rule don't let anyone ever fool you into believing that there's a rule for these things uh it it always depends on what you're trying to achieve and uh, don't let anybody or don't fool yourself into thinking that you need the best of the best to achieve what you want to also like i can do all these images with whatever camera you have right now as well i didn't think i could when i started off so that's why i'm telling you i know what you're thinking but today like purva said it's been like on june 15th it's going to be 10 years since i entered photography school today i can tell you you give me your whatever camera you have or the most basic one of your batch give me that and i'll do a demo for you guys uh, with that camera and your kit lens no problem so gear is secondary Yeah. Any yeah, other question? Have, yeah, yeah, we'll okay. just have a look at your personal work, and then Manasi has a question for you. Okay, so these uh, we'll quickly go through these. I'm shifting apartments also today, so I need to. Uh, yeah. I, actually, here in Dubai, when you shift apartments, you have to transfer electricity. So oh. at some point here, it's going to get cut. I don't know what time. <laughs> <laughs> So before that, we need to like <laughs> yes, pack yes. and move out from here. But this time, anyway. So these images, this one, this one, this one, these three pizza images, uh, were not for a client. Um, I did it purely because I don't have pizza images in my portfolio. Um, how does that help? It helps when you have some clients who be like, okay, we have a pizza shoot. We go through your portfolio. Oh, you don't have a pizza shoot. Uh, like do you know how to photograph pizza that I means it's a very dumb question but uh, that's almost like saying oh you have a you know a swift uh, picture of a swift you know the maruti suzuki swift in your portfolio uh, but you don't have a eco sport so do you have anything that's like an eco sport i mean that doesn't make sense but i have to pander to those sort of clients and be like oh you want pizza i have pizza you know have that sort of an attitude so these are images that we did purely to add them to our portfolio um and and doing these sort of images are important um one because it helps you build a rapport with your stylist and here you can do whatever you want however you want there is no client there is no agency telling you do it like this do it like that um i'll give you an example with uh, a senior photographer here in delhi he does shoots for pizza hut dominos all the big brands uh, for one pizza hut shoot they did one image a day just one pizza shot they did on the first day why because uh, you guys know that oregano and uh, chili flakes shaker that it comes in Yeah. when you eat when you eat at the restaurant um there was a debate between the client and the agency the entire day about whether they want to keep the the thing standing up or they wanted to have it lying down <laughs> this is not even the pizza we are talking about yeah this is the 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 smallest accompaniment that comes with the pizza but that's the kind of debate they are having you know it should be upright or kept sideways so here you don't have any of that you don't have the client saying oh no we want it in this i want to put it in a bowl i'll put it on a bowl i want to throw it on the board you can throw it on the board it's all about how you want to make that image look so it's very important that you are okay by the way this is a very remember i was talking about the sauce in this you won't see the sauce or it won't be so dark yeah this is a very typical image of how pizza hut would want it 
or dominoes would mm. want it you see that there's no you're not seeing a lot of that sauce yeah uh but again these are images that we're just doing for ourselves just to add um pizzas to our portfolio that's it nothing else most of this is most of the personal images are are because of that this one um uh, i've done a lot of i have a lot of beverages in my portfolio but i don't have an alcohol bottle um i came really close to doing a shoot for uh, shivas but budget issues the shoot in uh, happened with me it went with another photographer um uh, but then after that a lot of times you know i'd have agencies or production houses asking do you have any bottle shot do you have bottle shot do you have bottle shot and my answer is always the same i know how to do it just give me the job and you'll get a stunning image but of course that's not how it works they want to see bottles in your portfolio so that's what we're doing we're doing a series of images on uh, alcohol bottles and this is one of the images so every time i travel back from dubai to india from duty free i'll buy one bottle and uh, i have a stock of about 10 bottles you now unopened just lying there waiting to be photographed this is another one on the same lines uh, following that whole idea of having alcohol bottles in your portfolio uh, but this one is a little more interesting because me and a food stylist her name is kirin we are working on this personal project called beers of india uh we are going to do a series of images uh of local beers so it has to be uh, like we have multiple rules like it has to be an indian company it has to be brewed in india um uh, it can't be a foreign company brewing in india it can't be an indian company brewing outside um uh, all those things and then depending on what the beer is we create a interesting set and you know at least we think it's interesting and try to make images again purely for the sake of adding images to our portfolio so that we have a stronger portfolio mm -hmm. uh this one i showed you this one um do i have any more no okay so this one is again with the same stylist that i'm doing this series with but this is uh every every festival we used to make a point to send out e greeting cards like like say diwali you have those messages that say happy diwali right you have all those forwards so we decided that we want to create our own thing that gets forwarded mm -hmm. uh so every diwali we would do an image every christmas we would do an image um uh, we did one for valentines day uh we did one for holy uh we have yet to do images for eid but then we have plans uh so it's just that right it's just creating an image and then say happy diwali somewhere on the side send it out to clients with our names and stuff like that send it out to people who don't matter so then it becomes a forward for them you know at the bottom we'll just have a small thing that says photography by styling by uh, so forward it you know just keep sending it yeah. to whoever you want to again just as a marketing tool and again you get to add images like this to your portfolio this was again on the same like we did this these two images on the same day uh just about having ice cream slash kulfi slash something cold and frozen in your portfolio um nothing else no other reason purely purely for having images in your portfolio and uh, you know stuff like this where you know one is intact one is melting uh, you have the pistas strewn down on the board uh, the kind of plate all of this is you know we we decide we experiment with different ideas because there's no client there's no agency so it's all about what we want normally if this they clients wouldn't like this melting mm. uh, kulfi but then we're like hey we have one proper one so one melting because that's just naturally how it's going to be uh and then also if you notice if you if once you get into food photography you will see styles and and things like this uh india is about 5 years behind compared to how people do it in the west so places like london and especially london and you know i, I look up to london photographers more than uh european photographers more than i do american photographers 
because they're very modern in their approach. So you'll see uh, this melting thing when we did it in our portfolio, it was already being done in Europe, but in India, we still don't, this is still a big no-no. Uh, we don't do melting stuff over here. Uh, this one is again another part of a personal series where uh, uh, Akanksha and I were sort of like, let's put our skills together. Um, so we came up with a personal project where uh, we don't have an official name for it. What is it was basically chef and food. Um, so basically, we do a diptych. A diptych is basically two images next to each other, which make one image. Uh, where we do a portrait of a chef, and next to that will be a picture of their signature dish. Um, so this was one of those. Uh, chef that we did. She was a pastry chef. So we did this image. This was again, let's do donuts because we don't have donuts in our portfolio. I mean, that's that's it. That, that's all the idea. That's you know, When it comes to personal work, that's the idea. At least for me and Kirin, the stylist, I do most of my personal work. We don't have donuts, but there's Krispy Kreme, Dunkin' Donuts, Mad Over Donuts, all these people. How do we get them to look at our work? Okay, we have everything else, but what if the other type of clients who go like, oh, but you don't have donuts. So let's just add donuts to our portfolio. Uh, this one, granola, is the same. Uh, the granola, the chef who makes this granola is the same as the chef who makes this. Uh, but then when we did this one image, uh, she said, you know, actually, we, the this was the image that we used for the diptych. Uh, but then when we were there, she also had this lying around. So we were like, yeah, okay, let's just quickly make an image with this because we don't do basic props, which the stylist already had. And then we just had to put everything together. Yeah, so this is some of my personal work. I mean, there's a lot more, but uh, I'm in Dubai. I don't have my hard disks. I had to pull out what was available here. All right. That was really very interesting. Uh, yeah, Mansi, uh, you want uh, wanted to ask something? Yeah, thanks, Thomas. Yes. It was it was a wonderful session. Uh, I just have one question for you. I mean, mm -hmm. you've shot extensively, and now you know food is what you want to uh, shoot for the rest of your life. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. What is that one? easy shot or easy food that you've shot till now and that one very challenging food that you've done or is you know maybe in the future you might get but up till now what is the easiest and what is the most challenging one uh, i would say easiest would be uh, bakery stuff mm -hmm. things like breads and muffins and cupcakes i mean as long as they look good as long as the baker has made them well it's fairly easy to photograph. Mm -hmm. um, I think the toughest for me personally that I've never been able to, my, never got a good image has been sushi. Uh, it's not tough to photograph. It's just I have, a, I've never had, I've, I've shot sushi so many times, but I'm still not happy with a single image. Uh, but otherwise, one of the tougher things to photograph is ice cream. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you're using real ice cream, yeah. which some clients insist insist on um, that we use the real product. So that is very, very tough to photograph. Yeah. And then, of course, things like pizza. I mean, pizza. I mean, why pizza? Because this cheese can start to dry out and will start to look really horrible. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I mean, as long as you have a good stylist, it takes care of 90% of your job. Uh, 90 is pushing it. I'm praising stylists too much. Uh, about, say, 60% of your job is taken care of if you have a good stylist. But things like ice cream and cheese and uh, anything that can melt or if it melts and then it becomes very dry, then yeah, it's all really bad to photograph. Thank you so much. Thank you. So Naman had one question, which I think we, that we can end this is that what is your current project that you are doing since you are in Dubai? 
Nothing. I came here without a camera. I came here without any equipment. Uh, I was supposed to be here only for a month. Uh, I came here in March. I was supposed to be here only for a month. Go back in April. But uh, the lockdown happened in India, and then the lockdown got extended, and then uh, I'm getting my vaccination here now. So uh, end of the month, I'll be back in India after my second dose. But um, yeah, uh, the, my personal projects that I'm working on now is the Bears of India, which we are super kicked about. Uh, we're also going to do uh, start another project uh, called Jins of India, uh, which uh, should be very interesting because we're going to do it on large format film. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was I was telling you Purva about that fine art photographer I know. Right. Who shoots on film? Yeah, so I'm doing it with him. Uh, we'll shoot it on large format film. So I mean, let, let's see how it goes. Should be interesting. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. No I mean, it's been uh, amazing, and I really wanted to do this for a, re- a long time because uh, you know the kind of work that you have done. It's something that people should know because the, there are a lot of these images which. They must have seen, but they don't know that uh, who is the person behind it, and that's something yeah. which happens with all of us. Right. You know, images are there, but uh, no one knows that who has actually shot it. So yeah, it for, was great. And yeah, uh, commercial photographers are usually never known or heard of. <laughs> yeah, you see the work, but you don't know who's done it most of the time. Right. All right. I hope all of you have enjoyed and you've got a lot of insights into this. And. Uh, yeah, I would like to take the liberty to say that Thomas at any given point, if they want to ask you something, they can reach out to you and uh, yeah, maybe write an email or drop a message on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, for them. sure. Anytime anyone wants to ask me anything, except yes. how old I am, uh, <laughs> you, can, you can email me, message me, uh, you can ask Purva for my number, email, Instagram, all of that, yes. yeah. It was fun. I hope I hope I wasn't too boring. Uh, no, I no. hope you guys have have a fair idea of what to expect if you get into food photography. Uh, right. But yeah, you guys have any question anytime, please feel free to reach out. All right. Thank you so much for you know giving us your time. Thank and you. Yeah, thank, we'll thanks to all of you. Catch up later. Yes, we will. Thanks, yes. Pura. Thank thanks, you, everyone. Manthi. Thanks, Alok. Thank thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas. See you. Bye. Bye.